yourself or to protect your customers? Partly to protect ourselves, but mostly to protect, of course, to protect our customers, but most of all to protect the marketplace. What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. GameStop and the Wall Street Best Revolution has taken the mainstream media by storm and swept up influential people across the spectrum. It has ruined one of the top hedge funds in the industry, incensed news anchors, and forced unknown chaos inside the brokerages that lent out retail investors' shares without telling them. Some of the most influential people in the finance world have weighed in on the recent drama, some positive and some negative. Also, in an interview with CNBC, the chairman of Interactive Brokers, which was one of the first brokerages to ban trading GameStop among retail traders, admitted to the true reasons why they did it. In this video, we'll take a look at these issues and the state of Wall Street when it comes to who's taking which side. The biggest critics of Wall Street bets users making money on GameStop are the news anchors. From CNBC's David Faber to Joe Kernan to Scott Wapner, for some reason they seem to think that a stock going up is a bad thing. In an interview with Chamath Palihapitiya, Scott Wapner accused the Wall Street bets traders of not being informed and being irresponsible with their bets on GameStop and AMC. Just not true. I didn't say that. They all I didn't, say, I didn't say they can't do that kind of research. I'm questioning whether they're actually doing the research when it comes to things like GameStop and fear, AMC fear. And, and some of these I, other things. It's true that many people on Wall Street Bets do not do proper due diligence on GameStop before buying the stock. But as Chamath points out, discretionary trading, including momentum traders, have been active in hedge funds for decades. The stock market has been a place where people are supposed to be able to buy and sell stocks for whatever reason they want to. On January 28th, Mark Cuban went on air with anchor Joe Kernan, where the longtime CNBC host branded Wall Street Bets users buying calls and stock of their own free will as bad behavior. Here he is ridiculing Wall Street Bets for trying to stick it to the man. When and, and as a way to stick it to the shorts, uh, who are elitists and who, you know, have been gaming the system for so long, it just seems like you're 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 justifying it and two wrongs no, don't that's make not what right I'm saying at all. In reality, Wall Street Bets users are trying to make themselves some money, and it's none of his business why each one of them decides of their own accord whether or not to participate in the trade. Mark Cuban then defends what is happening on the Wall Street Bets side in an epic fashion. I'm okay. saying these are the rules that we have set. And when you have given rules, then you have to be willing to accept the behavior that those rules enable. He's absolutely right. As long as there's no active collusion among the Wall Street Bets traders, and there's no reason to suggest there is, the rules are set up that they're allowed to buy stock and options if they have the money and they so choose. The people who sell them those stock and options must understand the risks associated, and everyone must accept the consequences of the way the system is set up. Massachusetts Secretary of the Commonwealth William Galvin says GameStop speculation is a danger to the market and says trading should be halted for 30 days, which would be an unprecedented regulatory action. In William Galvin, he is Secretary of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, calling for a 30-day cooling off period for some of these names. Secretary Galvin, so, so go into why you believe that we need to maybe just put a hold on GameStop and some others. Well, first of all, it's a great risk to many of the unsophisticated investors who are investing in it, whatever their basis is. I've talked to some of these people. I think we've all recognized that the current pandemic has created an, a unique situation where many people have gotten into day trading, really have no idea exactly what they're doing. It's something that they're trying to figure their way as they go. These types of entities, uh, such as GameStop, have created a, a, a really difficult situation for these people. They think they're missing out if they don't make a bet on them. Uh, they, are, they don't really understand what they're doing. I think small-time investors like that, unsophisticated investors, are going to be hurt by this. He starts off by disparaging Wall Street Bets users, calling them unsophisticated investors who don't know what they're doing. This may have been true 50 years ago when only Wall Street professionals had access to market information. But today, with the rise of the internet, individual investors have access to up-to-date financial information and can do research on their own. Just look at the thousands of DD posts on Wall Street Bets. Many of them include detailed financial analysis and in a lot of cases are at least of the same quality as a hedge fund would do. Billionaire investor Chamath Palihapitiya says Wall Street bets traders are capable of the same fundamental analysis hedge fund managers do. The argument that retail investors are unsophisticated is outdated and just wrong. I would argue that the real unsophisticated investors are the hedge funds who lost billions shorting GameStop. Moreover, I think it really is a risk to the broader market. The point that was just made about the structural issue, the systemic issue of the shorting that's going on when you have this excess interest in a stock beyond what the issue is, that has to be addressed. It has to be addressed immediately because that represents a risk Why? to the overall market. He then goes on to say that the excess short interest in stocks like GameStop make them volatile and a risk to the market. 
Hedge funds have shorted more than 100% of GameStop stock and short interest currently sits at 139%, according to S3 partners. The excessive short selling almost put the company out of business in March as the company had a hard time raising capital with a sub $3 share price. This put GameStop's 15,000 employees at risk of losing their livelihoods. While the Massachusetts Secretary is right that these short selling hedge funds need to be reined in, his proposal to halt trading is a thinly veiled attempt to manipulate the share price down and bail out the hedge funds who caused this whole mess in the first place. But not all Wall Street professionals are against retail investors. Jim Bianco, founder of Bianco Research, points out that retail investors have actually been beating institutional investors since the beginning of the pandemic, and there is less and less reason for hedge funds to even exist. Oh, I think it's it's changed. It's changed for a long time. Look, the retail investor has every tool and the availability that every one of your guests, including me, has. They've got free trading. They've got fractional shares. They've got all the information that they need. They've got forums that they could discuss ideas with. There's very little an institutional investor can bring to the table that a retail investor doesn't have except outperformance. And unfortunately, many of those institutional investors just don't bring that to the table. So the retail investor is taking it upon himself to start investing their own money. And since the spring, they have largely been winning in almost every trade, whether it was spying the airlines after Buffett got out of them or what we saw with the work from home stocks over the summer and now going after the short sellers right now. They've got just one win after another. And it's been quite remarkable. While hedge funds are supposed to be sophisticated investors, they actually have a relatively poor track record of underperforming the market over the past five years. Even Warren Buffett, considered to be one of the smartest investors of all time, sold all of his airline stocks in May of 2020, at the pandemic lows. At the same time, the so-called unsophisticated retail traders piled into the airline stocks because they understood the value of the stocks and that most of these companies had enough liquidity to survive until air travel can recover. And the airline stocks have been massive outperformers since then. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Elizabeth Warren, one of the most respected bankruptcy lawyers in the world, said that the actions of Robinhood and other retail brokerages to restrict trading are not acceptable. She says that being forced to sign arbitration agreements when signing up for Robinhood and then being cut off from being able to trade is wrong. Millions of people are struggling and they're looking for another way to try to make money and going into a market that is not honest, that is not transparent, signing away their rights with arbitration agreements, and then getting cut off from being able to trade, that is not a way for them to be able to build any security at all. So why did Robinhood and other brokerages do it? There has been a lot of speculation as to the true reasons, as their vague official justification was, quote, due to market volatility, as if that were something new to Wall Street. Some people have speculated that it is because the market makers who purchase order flow from Robinhood, the biggest being Citadel, are no longer making money by trading against Wall Street Bets users and thus stopped buying Robinhood's order flow. This would be because Wall Street Bets users are buying the stock and anyone who trades against them is losing money. This would cause Robinhood to have to eat the exchange fees without receiving money from payment for order flow. However, Interactive Brokers Chairman Thomas Peter Fee admitted on national television the real reason why they decided to halt trading in GameStop. If one of those options is worth, say, an average option, I estimate worth about $10,000 now. So that is a loss of roughly 10 to $15 billion on the one side and 10 to $15 billion of gain on the other. I'm afraid that so there are many wanna... brokers who may not be able to meet these margin calls. So that is the. So just just to be clear, you're worried about the middlemen. Are, are you doing this move to protect yourself or to protect your customers? Partly to protect ourselves, but mostly to protect, of course, of, to protect our customers, but most of all to protect the marketplace, to protect the clearinghouse. What he basically just admitted is that there are a lot of people who sold stock and options either by shorting the stock naked or selling naked calls, such as Melvin, and now that GameStop has gone up so much, they might not be able to honor their contracts with the Wall Street Bets traders. Why is this the case? Because more than 100% of the float was shorted, and large amounts of the stock are held by Wall Street Bets users who are not willing to sell. These people are unable to come up with the stock to cover their shorts. When they don't have the stock or the money to cover, the clearinghouses or brokerages have to eat the losses. So how can this problem be solved? If you can force those retail investors to sell their stock without letting them buy any more, then you open up those short sellers to be able to cover their shorts at a much lower cost than otherwise would be the case. So the short sellers and hedge funds get a bailout, the brokerages don't lose money, and everyone is happy. 
except for the retail traders. This interview said loud and clear that the halt in trading was to protect themselves and to limit losses. As Mark Cuban said, the market has rules that were set up a long time ago and the people who bought GameStop were playing by those rules. Those on the wrong side of the trade should play by the rules too. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. Make sure to check out our new second channel, Wall Street Millennial Research, where we provide you with research about trending stocks. The link is in the description below. Also, click the link in the description below to get $30 when you start a new account with M1 Finance and deposit $100. If you have any thoughts about the GameStop saga, let us know in the comment section. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.